Good morning. So here is Alfred's snippet from Friday. So there are a few different clips in this. Um, the first one you're going to see me, he's on a slip lead and I'm working against another puppy named Ida. Um, and he is so focused on food and like drive. Like he's like, what's next? What's next? Okay, can I do this? Can I do this? Woo. Like it's kind of like a, a little bit like an ADD kiddo or a kiddo that's had way too much energy drinks. <laughs> Um, now, before this, we actually worked on skills in the training rooms where I would get nice and calm focus. We worked on name game, we worked on touch, we worked on sit, we worked on down, we worked on some of the puppy push-ups. Um, and Alfred is just love and life. <laughs> Good way to put it. Um, so, and I'm working on redirection, so we're just taking a couple steps backwards. I'm using food motivation to help him. Now, right here is a clip where I put him, I did put him in a prong collar, um, where I, it, he's just pulling too hard and he's hurting himself on that slip lead. So I put him on a prong um, just to have a little bit stronger adversive that says, hey, I need you to listen. Um, and he did. The, the amount of pulling was way less. Um, I'm still using treats to counteract so that it's still a positive experience. And you can see he's just a little bit more controlled. He's a little bit more focused. Um, and he's handling the distraction of the other dog pretty well. And I, when we talk about prong collars, they are... Same, same technique as a slip lead, but it's tension and release. So it's like a short tug and it's quick. So you're not, you're not cranking on your dog. You're like flicking your fingers almost. That's how light the tension needs to be. It's not a hard herk and jerk. It is truly just a, hey, focus. Um, and you can see how well he's working through this. Like, look at that, no pulling. And when he does, I just stop, I ask him for a sit and he plops right down. Um, tail is still going, still comfortable with what we are doing. In a second, you'll see us as we work through this, we're going to switch locations. We did another session and I wanted to include it so you can see us working on place, but also working on the distractions of another dog while on the prong. Oh, I forgot to mention, we also did some place up at the lobby with all the distractions and you can see that he's really working on that focus. Like, look at that drive. He's like, hey, um, <laughs> um, he's, he's really adorable. He cracks me up every time because he's like, ta-da, after you, he does a command for you. Um, but this is where we're working on our place. We're working on some of that boredom work and holding it for a period of time. So here is that shift of new location, um, much narrower, so we're a lot closer to each other. And you can see he gets a little distracted, I get him to focus, he gets reward, and he walks well. Now you can see I, briefly on my hand, it almost looks like my hand's just swinging a little bit, um, but right here, there's a little bit of correction and he walks well. And he completely ignored the person and we're walking past again. So I'm gonna ask him for a sit. And it does help to have him focus for transitions. Um, hey, I see a dog, I have to stop. Hey, we're gonna turn the corner, I need to stop and focus. Um, we're still very much squirrel brain, but we're a positive squirrel brain, if that makes any sense. <laughs> So you're gonna see in just a moment, we pull out the place cot. Um, now, when we teach place, we teach it 
um, or stay, we teach it on a place caught first. Dogs learn three-dimensionally, so when they realize that they are on, think of like floating dog island or a defined boundary, they can hold the concept a lot easier and maintain it um, with a higher consistency rate. So you can see Ida's working on it. We're working on walking past uh, a neutral dog or somewhat neutral dog with Ida being on there. Um, but eventually we're gonna get Alfred on the place cot and you're gonna notice that the first couple times I do help his back end get up on it. He kind of forgets where his butt is. He doesn't realize that where his paws live in the world. So <laughs> we'll work on that. But you can see I lure him on the first time, he hops back off, so I'm gonna lure him back up there. He gets his front two feet on there and then you can see those kind of stretch those back legs. So I just kind of help you know, whoop, we're gonna go up here. He sits beautifully and he has this concept really down really well. Um, but there's a couple times where I even just stand right next to him just so he has like, oh, hey, there's a person here. I got to move my legs. We'll work on that consciousness of where my legs are in the world. Um, but right now it's just getting him comfortable sitting on something different. But he handles this pretty well. I'll have a video on Monday. I think I mentioned this earlier that we talk about place and how to integrate it at home. But honestly, Friday, hopefully he was tired for you guys. He had some really great focus.